Uh, is this thing on? Okay, there we are. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Brainy, the RPG Cat, and I want to welcome you to tonight's installment of my stream, Brainy, the RPG Cat. So I have this labeled as a debut stream, but uh, for those of you who actually have been following the channel and what I've been doing across social media, you know that's not entirely accurate. Um, I did do a circuit of old streams on my previous channel, which was twitch.tv slash Scarlet Derby. And I was also on this channel at this exact same time, last Friday, um, so in order to uh, test out um, a lot of my streaming and a lot of my streaming infrastructure, as it were. And it does seem that everything, you know, seems to be working now. So I am a lot more confident about today actually being uh, my debut stream as opposed as opposed to last week. Nagisa Ayanami says Nyan, and I'm going to say Nyan right back. And so, you know, I have a few more encoutrements on tonight's stream that um, weren't here before. One of them is the chat blackboard that you see behind me, and that's where all of your lovely messages are going to be showing up throughout the night. And so, you know, um, I'm a little bit more confident about showing off my dwelling place. So for those of you who don't know, I am Brainy the RPG Cat. I am a level 3 tabaxi wizard. And I am in my home sweet home. This is the Library of the Near, an endless repository for information for um, smart magic using know-it-alls just like yours personally. And so we carry just the depth of all intelligence within the forgotten realms within these hollowed halls, and I am, of course, your librarian. Um, in my spare time, though, I do like to spend a lot of time writing tabletop RPGs, regaling you with the stories of once amazing Dungeons & Dragons adventures, and I also like to write a few of them all, and that brings us very neatly to tonight. Tonight, we are going to be writing an RPG we are going to be writing an adventure in 5e that is going to be all about pirates and economics. It's kind of like the, gosh, what is the name of the vampire module? Um, Curse of Strahd, but for uh, characters with pirate backgrounds. And um, I have written uh, a campaign similar to this um, a couple of times in the past. And um, I just wanted do what I can to just commit it to the PC at this point because, you know, I previously just written it in areas like I, I'd written it inside of um, actual notebooks. I hand wrote the notebooks and I, and I worked on the maps. But um, tonight I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm actually going to begin to work on a draft um, for it and I hope to publish it sometime in the very f near future. And so bringing the RPG cat, you can see the logo in the upper left-hand corner, is that um, that pretty soon is going to become my brand for uh, D&D modules that I write on this uh, stream and then put into uh, on, onto sites like Drive-Thru RPG. So I hope you will... Uh, so I appreciate you for tuning into tonight's stream. I will do my best in order to be entertaining while I under, undergo this task. And um, hopefully uh, we will begin to work on this journey together where I eventually become a publisher of uh, tabletop RPGs. And uh, I will have some of my modules available for sale on, you know, the standard websites. So... Well, enough babble. Let's go ahead and let us head over to my writer's room, and then we can go ahead and we can get started with tonight's stream. Okay, so um, let me see. I think I want to zoom onto this a little bit, and so so that um, things will be a lot easier to read on stream. I'm still just using a normal size font here, um, so let's. I'm just switching it to Times to Roman 12 because I've done some scholarly writing and I'm just a little bit too used to writing in Times New Roman. So, all right. So, let's see. The title of this campaign is going to be uh, Jolly Rogers, 
islands. And so I think, you know, previous versions of it, I've wrote, written this title to be um, Jolly Rogers Bay or something like that, which is something I think I've taken directly from Banjo-Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. So we hope to publish it. We can't use that na name again, but um, at any rate. Um, so um, this is going to be a campaign, and it's going to be in 5e. And so... Um, so effectively, um, I understand that, you know, 5e has had a pirate background, a pirate subclass for a significant amount of time at this point, but I kind of feel like, you know, there just hasn't been an awful lot to do with that. And it is very similar to Curse of Strahd in that, um, there are always vampires hanging around in earlier versions of, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but not one that really thoroughly worked within the vampiric horror and monster theme. So Curse of Strahd was eventually created in order to rectify that. And so that's what I'm hoping to write with this module. All right, so um, I have, well, of course I have my word file open. Um, every, uh, occasionally I might be uh, looking into uh, some, I, I might be looking up something you know, using the web. And so, uh, Hopefully we'll be able to do that with a minimal amount of consequence because, you know, we're, we're kind of using wild magic when we're working on the web is that uh, every once in a while you just might run up something that would be entirely inappropriate. You know, well, we've got our eyes out for that, don't we, folks? All right, so page one, word one. Okay, so um, introduction. Okay, so you... Have come to the Basin Archipelago, and Jolly Rogers um, Archipelago is probably one of the early uh, names of this module. But this doesn't roll off the tongue, me. So let's see. Um, bring a string of islands that are just northwest. That are just north west west of the largest trade continent in the kingdom. Just um, uh, I've double written D of uh, the largest trade. Continent of, of the kingdom, and so um, I believe that um, you know, um, in a normal five E campaign, you would probably use something like uh, Baldur's Gate in or the Sword Coast, but um, we're not necessarily working with anything that has a Dungeons and Dragons trademark with it, with the only possible exception being the monsters. So um, we're not going to get too specific there. However, um, we are going to need to come up with a name for the actual main trade continent at some point. And as we, we get on with writing, um, you're going to see why. All right, so let's see. Um, so... Let's see, um, the largest trading continent of the kingdom, you have come seeking any number of things. Perhaps you are hoping to find some ri riches. Perhaps you are you are seeking adventure, or perhaps you have a vested interest in discovering new land. Um, let's see. I'm going to have to look up vested interest, but that might not be the proper phrasing. 
we can see we're gonna work with phrasing we can do phrasing all right so um let's see here um so so these islands call to you um Islands come calling to you um, on behalf of some new or ordinances says that have been passed to you from the mainland. All right. Um, Many wealthy patrons and tradesmen want the um, wilds of these um, islands permanently um, chartered on maps. Um, after their, after their presumed desertion, from the pirate outlaws that were previously known, known to occupy these shores. Um, let's see. And so what I'm effectively setting up here is I'm setting up a situation where you got you uh, the player characters are going to be the discoverers of this new land and um, they have the ability to uh, have a significant amount of choice about what they do if they're just going to go treasure hunting uh whether or not they are going to actually work to um charter the mainland uh a charter for the uh, tr uh, charter the islands for the mainland or there's also an option to actually you know figure out what had happened to the pr pirates who previously occupied this space and uh possibly join them and possibly join them on their politics and join them on their endeavors. So this is um, a quest that can have a threefold um, path, but um, the main part of the story um, is still something that affects all three of the things that the uh, players can potentially choose. All right, so let's see here. So what did I last write uh, after their pr after, um, many wealthy patients and trademen want the wilds of these islands chartered on maps after their presumed desertion from the pirate outlaws that were previously known to occupy these shores. Let's see. You know of one specific um, such um, one specific such mandate, specific such one, okay, so instead of saying specific, you know, one such, I mean, everybody's got an Achilles heel when they do creative writing, and my Achilles heel tends to be that, uh, I tend to write words redundantly. So, you know, if anybody um, watching this, if they catch that in chat, please let me know and I will probably delete it immediately. It, um, I do appreciate the extra assistance with that. All right, so let's see here. Um, okay. Um, 
you know of one such um, order, you know of one such order, um, one such order um, that has come from the island's main, from the island's main trading post. You know one such order, which has come from, which has come from, okay. Has come from the main uh, trading post. Um, ruddy little colonized um, rock uh, known as um, gosh and it's a shame because you know I've, I've lost all of my original notes for this so I, I'm starting to do a lot of hat pulls I'm just starting to pull a, a lot of names of locations and specific NPCs out of my hat at the moment. Um, known as Barrel Island. And it's very likely that I might be changing some of these names later, but you know, um, I'm, I'm writing down some of these in order to uh, have just points of, uh, you know, just areas of the, of the internal map and uh, what do people usually call it? Um, the theater of the mind in place so I can continue writing at this point. Um, known as Stock, as Stock and Barrel Island. I mean, that's probably a good way to put it because it, then you really know that this island is gonna be the main hub of the area. Okay, so. Come, come to the mainland. Um, so there a wealthy Marquis, the Marquis, I'm going to need to come up with a more specific name later, but he'll be just be Marquis in the text for now. Um, let's see. There are wealthy, my land baron uh, um, called the Marquis has brought a section of the mainland's uh, Soldiers to serve as the first uh, law and order um, so for some reason the word constabulary pops into my head but I'm not entirely sure if that is the right word so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead I'm going to start opening up Google and um, I'm going to search that one up. What is a constabulary? All right. Um, the constables of the di uh, district collectively. Yeah, that's what it is. So that is the right word. Serve as the first constabulary of these islands you have ha, have the you have a 
um, uh, you have a distinct opportunity to join his cause. Um, so let me see. I want to take some of this and I want to move it down. Me. Let me cut this here for now and let me see if this makes sense. Okay, you've come to the basin archipelago, uh, archipelago. A string of islands are just northwest of the largest trading continent of the kingdom. These islands come calling to you on behalf of some new ordinances that have been passed to you from the mainland. Many wealthy patrons and tradesmen that want the wilds of these islands charted on maps after their presumed desertion from the pirate outlaws that are previously known to occupy these shores. You know of one such order, which has come to the mainland from the island's main trading post, a ready little colonized rock known as Stock and Barrel Island. There, a wealthy baron called the Marquis has brought a section of the mainland soldiers to serve as the first constabulary of these islands. You have a distinct opportunity to join this cause. You have come seeking any number of things. Uh, perhaps you're seeking adventure or, uh, per, okay, so, let's see. Perhaps you've come hoping to find some riches, seeking adventures, or perhaps you have a vested interest in discovering uh, new lands. Um, joining the uh, Marquis, um, joining the Marquis cause to bring um, law to these islands is an option to achieving your goals, but um, the element of see the surrounding but the element of mystery surrounding the dis dis disappearance of uh, pirate outlaws might intrigue you in a slightly different way where there were pirates um, there might be treasure um, but but to give fair warning um, where there once, where there were once pirates, when there once, where there once pirates, there might be treasure, but to give fair warning, um, where there were once pirates, there's a very good, good chance that there might be pirates still. All right. Mechanics. So, you know, I'm just going to write a summary of the mechanics that I want in this game. Um, so that um, I can write the rest of the module according to what I've already developed. So let's see here. Um, so this is a game recommended for a parties of any size. Um, it is an adventure for, uh, 
levels one through seven. Okay. This game intends to be tends to be um, this game intends to be an adventure adventure for player char characters of any race class and background background Brown. Although, although pir pirate subclasses and backgrounds in 5e are highly recommended. You're going to need to sail, you know. Um, all right, so, then I'm going to have to summarize that uh, basically, you know, how I intend the, the game to be played. Let's see here. Um, recommended um so the purpose of this game is to accommodate role playing um in a Contains, uh, paths, it contains distinct paths for players, um, it can, uh, who are seeking to play either good or evil align adventures. Okay, so the two primary NPCs in this in this game are utilized to um, be the Two primary, and I, I'm trying to decide whether or not I name them immediately or not, but I think it's going to become apparent um, which one of these two NPCs is for the good path and which one of these two NPCs is for the not as good path. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, walk class of whatever. Alignment the par party chooses to follow. All right. So good. 
Um, So I'm pretty sure that there needs to be a little bit more sizzle text um, there, but um, I think this might be a good time to uh, move on. Okay, so chapter one, making land, land, okay, so. So, and your your party ma touches makes land on stock and barrel is island. Um, the sh ship that okay, the ship that that brought you here, here, has made the conspicuous choice not to use the, um, not to use the docking station. Confetti the Clown says, well, hello there, cat. Um, hello there, Confetti the Clown. So Confetti the Clown is a is a uh, fellow uh, VTuber. Um, I don't think I have had the opportunity to actually get into their stream yet, but we have been communicating pretty significantly over Twitter in the past few weeks. So Confetti the Clown wishes me a happy debut, and I and to that I say thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate that enormously. So. Um, as I was saying at the very top of the stream is that this is not, um, it's not entirely accurate that this is the first time that I've ever streamed. I did a handful of streams on a previous channel, and also I streamed once on this channel just to test out this format. But yeah, so, but still, I, this is, this is the official debut, you know? This is my stream. I get to debut as many times as I want. And so I do appreciate you coming off of, uh... Twitter and the VTuber hashtag to join me tonight. All right, damn right you do. Um, I don't think that I have my uh, Streamlabs chat set up just yet, but I do want to give you an appropriate shout out. So twitch.tv slash confetti the clown. I can say to you at this point is that they stream, they make streams, they make streams on Twitch, but you should absolutely check them out because they have been absolutely the nicest uh, people to me, uh, especially when it comes to my pre-debut status on Twitter. All right, so moving right along. So I'm doing the primary purpose of what I hope uh, my stream is going to be about, and it's um, effectively it is to you know help assist with my creative writing. Uh, particularly my my writing of uh, RPG modules and um, um, I'm not entirely sure it's the first of its kind but I don't see a lot of people do a lot of uh, writing on Twitch but and um, also uh, uh, writing when it comes to RPGs so I'm, I'm hoping to help out a lot of people by you know showing basically showing them how uh, my creative writing process works and it might encourage them to make their own homebrews and uh, get involved with the uh, at-large um, RPG writing community. So, let's see. Um, let's see. Um, so, where was I left off? Okay. The ship that brought you here is made the, not to use a docking station, which, you know, which, according to the map, to the map is actually off the southeast 
corner of this same island. So right now I'm in the middle of writing a um, an alignment neutral um, pirate interpolitical sort of a game here. And so it's basically about uh, people who have pirate backgrounds and also people who have pirate subclasses in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And it is a module that I, you know, I hope to make that is very similar to Curse of Strahd. Curse of Strahd deals with all things horror in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm hoping that this module will um, be a module for all things pirate. So let's see here. Um, so you'll, you'll end up seeing me making a lot of typos. I'm not going to correct them right away. Is that, you know, I'm just trying to keep... I'm trying to keep the ball rolling when it comes to creative writing so that, you know, I get a significant amount of work done while I'm streaming. Confetti the Clown has been saying, this is nice. This is very cool. And, I, you know, um, you're after my own heart at this point. Um, I do really, really, really appreciate the um, um, interest that you're bringing to this. All right. So um, let's see. Sorry. So, Stan, the ship has run ashore, ashore on the soft white sand of sand directly um, of the beach on the um, southernmost on the southern. Southernmost section. Let me see. Uh, the, the southernmost section. The captain. The captain of the ship shouts, "All ashore!" And then. Throws a rope ladder over uh, over the side of the boat. You have to you have to wade. So you have to climb down the ladder and and wade through shallow waters just to get to the beach. Okay, so and that's just really just kind of a, the rather annoying place that you have to start from. Um, down and wade through a foot of knee deep water to get to sh uh, just to get to the shore. Okay, there we are. Um, so that's not too bad for flavor text. I mean, it's certainly the kind of mood that I want to set that I wasn't setting when I was writing the game mechanic section. Um, let's see. So, you're only um, point of contact comes from the Marquis's office, which is um, at the northernmost part of town. Using D and D terminology, I do need to say village. Um, let's see. Northernmost part of the small village. Um, Marquis's office, as in the uh, office belonging to the Marquis, 
which is at the northernmost part of the small village. I might not uh, reveal the Marquis' name until you actually meet him, and that's really just going to be part of the momentum of the story. Um, small village. This is the northern uh, part of the small village that's supposed to be um, be at the top of this sandy shore. All right. Um, let's see here. However. Don't even fully cross the beach before for um, trouble begins brewing. Just up um, just ahead of where the ship landed you find find two men engage in an enormous scuffle and well in a uh, two men engaged in a heavy brawl well two men to, to say it's a serious brawl it's it's some kind of brawl to be certain um, and engaged in a heated argument. Uh, two men engaged in a heated, uh, uh, heated argument. Um, Swain and um, and take you. All right. So if you participate in if you engage. With these two NPCs, you quickly discover that um, if you engage with these two uh, NPCs, uh, you did quickly discover that they possess direct links to the presumed. Um, aristocracy of this island. Montague in particular is one of the soon to be, be 
deputized lawmen of the um, of the basin archipelago. works directly under the uh, um, who works directly under the marquee whose uh, bulletin you're hoping to answer. Answer. Some Thing is slightly more mysterious about about boat swain, however. So, Boatswain uh, appears to be one of the village locals. Okay, well, well, he just might be one of the... So, while he just might be one of the locals he seems to have links to a he seems to have a past which lines up which um aligns he seems to have a past which aligns um with the with um, this Iceland's his history of this island's history of pirate um, substrafuse of pirate espionage of pirate um, islands uh old history of islands um storied pirate past that's probably the best way to put that okay so montague And then I'm gonna write NP, and then I need to write NPC descriptions of uh, both of these characters. Let's see, uh, let's start with both Swain. Okay. Let's see, I'll just save this on the desktop for now. All right. Um, so, as a party, you have a choice to intervene on behalf of the bullied bullied bo boatswain or the bullying Montague. Dep 
depending on who you you assist um, so depending on who you assist the other will uh, begin to begin to discuss with with you um, information that is crucial to proceeding in the campaign. All right, your party can use any tact. Uh, to uh, break up their argument. And beginning with the diplomacy and or ending ending with and ending with outright violence. All right. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always there's always an op an opportunity for the par party to ignore them both. And proceed to the uh, to their only lead. See to their only lead. See towards their only lead. Only lead the Marquis office. Apostrophe again. It has another apostrophe on it. All right. So let's see here. I say that a lot while I'm writing. It's just fair warning. You know, you'll hear me say that a lot. You'll hear me say, okay, let's see here. Let's see now. Let's see here and now. Allow us to see here and now. <laughs> um, let's see. So let's see. So. Boatswain is one of the local villagers. Boatswain is one of the locals. A villager. Okay. I've got to head back to work now, but I look forward to catching your next stream. Yes, thank you very much for tuning in, Confetti the Clown. Um, so, once again, you know, be sure to check out their channel. Uh, twitch.tv slash confetti the clown and I'll go ahead and I'll post the link again have a great stream and a great night cat and so um, I look forward to uh, seeing you later and hopefully I'll get an opportunity to catch one of your twitch streams okay so I'm moving right along uh, say who moon here from the from the, the mainland some time ago. Um, he is a cartographer. Um, he is a cartographer by trade. Or by trade who in youth used to travel uh, sail the seas as an expert navigator <laughs> so he has um, got in uh, sing, sing, significantly on years he is Well, 
he's gotten significantly older since then. Then, then, he is white-haired, pot-bellied, and seem seem and obviously the asleep, Qu quite nervous. Plus about about. Getting in a brawl, brawl with this Mon Montague fellow. I say the re reason their argument began. Um, let's see. So the reason that their argument began um, was. Because a map has gone missing um, from the Marquis' office. Chris, and and Montague has uh, Montague directly blamed Boat, boat Swain, because he is in all likelihood the only person who knows that this map was in the Marquis' possession. The possession, you know. If Let's see. There is something resembling a glitch in, in my character there, but <laughs> I won't know what it is until I check the tape now. Um, let's see. Reveals to the party that while he wasn't the one who had taken the Marquis map, uh, he also he knows that the map. Belonging to the Mark Marquis is a complete forgery. Say, in fact, the copy of the map that. Marquis had asked him to make him a copy 
Um, the forgery. Okay. And so we got to get into the intrigue here. Let's see. Um, So he was hired by the keys to to make a well, it's not to make a copy to draw a map of the Exact opposite. Of the areas the mark he intended to search. See, um, the, he is in league with a group that considers to be one of the true benefactors of the base, uh, basin archipelago, um, and so this is the this is begin to uh, describe the the NPC that is diametrically opposed to the Marquis, who is named Jolly Roger. Their leader, Jolly Roger, Roger, was arrested and put into um, the the local. 
Echo Jailhouse by the Marquee. Use the same day he landed landed on the on the island. He he believes that the um, mar that the marquis is um, is um, planning to usurp. Usurp their islands government and in, install himself as the islands as the islands I mean so not quite a monarch but um Okay, and the island's leader. Leader. He then encourages you to go to the he go to the jailhouse and speak to Jolly Roger um, for more information. However, he warns you that the Marquis guards are all ar around and you need to use a you need to use discretion if you want to pull this off successfully. So now that I've written the description for Boatswain, what I need to do is I need to write the description for Montague. And, but I'm, what I'm trying to decide at the moment is uh, whether or not that description needs to come before or after um, the one for Boatswain. And so, let me see. Okay, well, I think it does need to come before, so I'm going to start writing it before. All right, um, Montague. Okay, so Montague is as new um, to this island as you are. Right. He was one of the first people um, hired by the Marquis to um, Join the join the guard guard that which the marquee the um The marquee hopes to install across the archipelago. He is a tall and very strong looking individual. Um, let me see.
particularly seasoned um, adventurer. Um, you would hate to get involved in a. You hate to get involved with a brawl and with a brawl against him. He is clearly here to be the Marquis' muscle. All right. Um. If it, if the PCs um, choose to assist Montecule over both both Swain, he will. Welcome, you will. Welcome, y y y you, you to the island. He clearly has the impression that he is clearly, you know, um, he is boastful of the implication. He is quite boastfully under the belief that um, he is the Marquis' right hand man. So let me see. You know, Jolly Rogers' uh, uh, description is a little bit a little bit beefier than Montague's at the moment, but I'll 
have to change that as I begin working on some other drafts. So, let's see here. I think I would like to write for maybe just only about 30, 30 more minutes. And, you know, that'll be good for a first stream. I might get the opportunity to actually do some daytime streams. Uh, specifically for this format where I'm writing the RPGs. And so I'm looking very forward to, you know, spending this time with you in the future, uh, fleshing out uh, some of these RPG modules that I've been writing. Um, let's see. Um, I think... Uh, so... Now that I've set up, you know, what these two um, NPCs are actually going to do to assist the players, this opens up uh, two other scenarios that I have to write. One of them is the Marquis Manor. The other one is uh, the J Jail House of Jolly Roger. So then now I have to put in a, a bit of text that will tell um, the, the, re the reader that they're going to have to go to one section or they're going to have to go another in order to continue the adventure. So, depending on how your negotiations work out, should you you choose to even have them, you will proceed to um, either the, the Marquis Manors or um, the Jailhouse of Jolly Roger. So we're beginning to write the split path that this adventure is going to be taking place in. Um, you have the opportunity to either end up working for the Marquis and, or Jolly Roger. And um, the difference between the two is that you might be working for somebody who is um, good aligned and, 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 fully, and who fully intends to bring law and order to the island or you were going to uh work with someone who is um you know i shouldn't use good and evil alignment what i should use instead is i'm i'm going to be choosing i'm going to be choosing between lawful and chaotic that's probably the better way to put all of this okay if you go the lawful route you'll be working for the marquee and you will be uh um somebody who is responsible for bringing a law to this land. If you are a, if you're more chaotically aligned, you'll find yourself working for Jolly Roger, and you will be, uh, uh, and then you will be, uh, you know, a more, uh, let's say, uh, literate, literally literacy accurate type of pirate, liter literal, literacy accurate, uh, pirating individual. You're going to be a, a literal pirate. You'll be more a literal, literal pir uh, pirate if you're working for Jolly Roger. I don't know why that description had to go that way. Okay, one of, the, one of these people is going to make you a lot of man, the other person is going to make you a pirate. And that is really what the, what the description does. All right. So... Okay, so you will head to see Marquis if you choose to ignore the argument on the shore, um, or if you choose to side with. Montague in the argument. So the Marquis lives in a glorious looking manner made of white stone 
and brick that is that um, st stands in the northern most part of the village and and is clearly the largest building there. Um, all right. So the first thing thing your party will notice um Upon walking into the door is a is the s smell of lots of freshly prepared food. Food. So a room directly to the right, the right, right of. Of the main hall um, is clearly the place to go. To go, go, and and if if Montague is with you. as well. The banquet hall is has a long table in its center stacked almost to the roof with freshly prepared meat and meat cheese and bread bread it is also surrounded by dozens of uh, the mark keys recruits all And they are all stuffing themselves like animals. And they're all, well. All stuffing their cheeks full of food. That's the way to put it. All stuffing their cheeks full of food. Full of food. Okay. Um. You and your your mates can gra grab a seat and eat, eat your fill without anyone at the table, anyone at the table interfering, interfering with you. Um, so the mar so the marquee will enter the room. The marquee will enter the room shortly after you get there, there. and will sit at the head of the table with the rest of his men. He is a tall and skinny fellow dressed in silk finery and wearing, wearing a cur curly, uh, wearing a white powdered wig. Okay. I'm, I, 
think I'm going to need to start making this an NPC section. The Archie uh, Duke de, de La Fontaine. I think that's what I actually named him when I wrote the original model. It's just coming back to me at this point. Um, all right. If uh, Montecute brought you here, here. If Montecute brought you here, he will uh, introduce you di directly to the. Let's see. You know, actually, I think I'm going to say this N NPC section. Because I think I'm still writing the, uh, uh, I, st I think I'm still writing the, uh, mo the more, uh, forward momentum version of this. Let's see. Um, if the Montecu you brought you here, he'll int introduce you directly to him. To, to him. Him. But if you decided did to come alone, you have the discretion of e either talking to him or keeping your head low and this standing in during his uh, during his lunch. All right. Now I'll put the NPC section. Okay, so. You will only learn the Marquis full name from his own lips. Anyone else? Uh, let's see. So you'll only learn the Marquis's full name from his own lips. Everyone else um, in the village or among his guard. Guard only refer to him as refer to him as the Marquis. All right, so. His ambition, which was clearly out outlined in the letter that brought you to the Basin Archipelago, um, is be the, the, the first aristocrat and lawman of this developing land. All right. Which previously was only occupied by pirates. And so there might need to be some pl 
they were text to you know that that they were this land was previously occupied by treacherous pirates, evil pirates, despicable pirates, something along those lines. All right. Um. So, you know, if he has um, an inkling uh, that you have just arrived in the island, he is going to ask you to... Um, He's going to. So, if he has an inkling that you just arrived on the island, he is going to ask you to join his crew. He'll be mounting an expedition soon that will be charting most of the archipelago and. Um, well, to go and to define areas where um, wealthy the beneficiaries from the mainland will be sailing and creating new settlements. All right. Let's see, one of the true ambiguous undertakings of the developed world is uh, settlements. All right, so let's see. Um, So, he is somewhat held back in his plans, uh, however, when the map he commissioned uh, from, from the... cartographer boat swing swing has mysteriously gone missing Let's see oh, he will he will ask ask your he'll ask the par party to um Join Montecchio in in searching for the missing map. He is going to do that. He's going to ask the party to join the party and to search, join Montague and searching for the missing map. And he considers this this the first um, tr tr uh, trial. Do, do, do. He 
considers this the first trial, you, you, sh sh you shall complete to, uh, you should complete to earn his trust. He is also put out a 25 gold bounty on the missing He's also put a 20 on the missing map and you are gar 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 you are guaranteed and you to collect that shield you find it Your your party uh -huh, is so once you're done, you're done speaking with the mark. You have the freedom to explore the village. Otherwise, you may proceed to um, proceed to the the lost. Um, I don't just want to say the lost map. I should give this a better name. Um, to here be dragons. Um, see to the quest here be dragons, where y y you will go, where you'll go in search of the map. And so this is something that there's a, there's a little bit of meta text going on here. Um, only the people who, the person who is the dungeon master uh, probably knows that um, of the duality of this situation. But as player characters, you really only have, you know, um, an in-character choice of helping the marquee find the map, which we would only know to be fake if we decided to help out both Swain and uh, his boss, Jolly Roger. And so that's the thing is that, you know, um, if you complete either of these quests, you're eventually going to end up with a map and then you're going to end up doing the uh, larger task of uh, setting sail across the archipelago, uh, going to the various islands and uh, 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 just continuing on with the quest using one of these two premises as your framework. And so it's a little bit interactive, but um, as I had previously said, there's going to be uh, common threads, common locations, common stopping points throughout this, uh, the entirety of this adventure. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's another section I'm going to have to write at, at um, eventually, Here Be Dragons. Guns, and I'm going to give that a quest tag. All right. Okay, so if you follow boat swings advice, you will Instead, be heading to, you will, well not instead, you'll, you'll be heading to the jailhouse house to speak with, with the man, Bo, Bo Swain considers to be the true lead 
there of, um, what did I call this? I called it, um, Stock and Barrel Island, I think. Um, yeah, Stock and Barrel Island. Stock and Barrel Island. Um, and Jolly Roger. Um, So when you arrive at the, so when you arrive at the so when you arrive at the jail jail house, you you, you surprisingly find it to be an area of local activity. All right. Um, area of bustling local activity. Shopkeepers selling wares on blankets um, along the wall walls of the jail, jail and street performers. pieces of copper. Of copper. Fairly the locals do not fear the jail as much as they supposed that they're they're su su supposed to. Even though you can cle clearly, clearly see a garn posted on uh, outside of, a, a, of almost every barred window. The party needs to use discretion here. Needs to be this free here. They don't want to draw too much attention to themselves or the guards may suspect, suspect their are in they are up to something it 
might be worth their time time to speak to a few of the locals to see if anyone um it might be worth our time to speak to to see if um anyone has a way to get them to speak with Jolly, uh, with Jolly Roger. Um, so, after a little bit of easy conversation um, you hear s someone mention the name um, so I mentioned I'm introducing a goblin NPC at this point and I'm trying to figure out what what is his name would be I think uh, something like uh, uh, um, something along the lines of Eddie Edward Edmund, um, maybe even Egbert, and the name Egbert, and points you you to the south wall of and well and tells you to find a barrel on the south wall of the on the south wall of the of the of the jail and knock knock okay so npc okay Egbert. I don't think that's how you spell Egbert. Maybe it's the goblin way to uh, spell Egbert. So let's see. Um, so. Should, should you knock on the barrel? Should you knock on the barrel, you will meet a Egbert who seems to have been hiding inside. Okay. He he is a he's a goblin and a particularly fairly small one dressed in just a bandana and a pair of brown slacks. Um, so, like Boatswain, he was uh you know he is part of this un he is part of this um underground he is part of this group of underground loyalists of yeah, um unspoken loyalists to Jolly Roger He 
says says he 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 can get you to sp speak to the boss right away, but he needs something in order to prove you can be be trusted. He sends you to the inn, and so I'm going to need to come up with a specific name for the inn. Um, he sends you to the Gerded Loins Tavern. you to ask for Vargas. Um, doing so will lead you to the quest, quest in and out brawler. All right. So the quest here shall be dragons, quest in and out brawler. And I do need to pay attention to, you know, how I'm ordering these because um, I have to order them in a way so that people will be able to recognize that they're following one type of path or another one. Okay, so, well, at any rate, um, so my time is almost up. I probably only have a, I have a minute of my allotted time. So let me go ahead and let me give this a save. All right, and let's go ahead and let's head over to sign off. So here we are again at the sign off. Thank you everybody for tuning in. This has been the premiere stream of Brittany the RPG Cat. It wasn't much in the end, but um, it was really important for me to come back in a week and to give the seal call a try after my previous stream this past Friday. And so um, Probably, I probably won't sign up for the next week. I will probably come back next Friday. And once I come back next Friday, I will uh, have developed my full schedule of upcoming streams. So please watch out for that. Uh, one good way to watch out for that would be to follow me on my Twitter page, twitter.com, Brady the RPG Cat. So... All right, so um, follow me on twitter.com slash Brady the RPG Cat. I will keep you posted over Twitter about um, what I am going to be doing. Um, and uh, so, you know, I still have a significant amount of plans to make, so I'll probably be posting something on the Twitter page pretty soon. Please follow. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the stream. Thank you to Nagisa Ayanami. Thank you to Confetti the Clown. Um, you guys are terrific, and so... Um, and so um, I will see you next week with uh, more RPG-related goodies. Thank you for tuning in, cats and kittens, humans and variant humans, and every other racing class out there. Um, I'm going to take a moment, and I'm going to decide who to raid. Let me see. Who is available right now? Um, I would like to pay a visit to... Um, Okay, so I think I would like to go over to um, visit Akami. Right now they're playing Kirby and the Forgotten Land. So let's go ahead and let, let's, uh, let's go over there and let's check them out. I'm sure that'll be fun. All right, right. All right, everybody. So thank you. Everybody for tuning in to tonight's stream. I will be back next week, next Friday at um, 8 p.m. or possibly 7 p.m. on the standard time. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in, and I will see you then. So long.